when you are all alone. Maybe the one who is waiting for you will prove untrue. Then what will And sigh, wishing that I were near. Then maybe, 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 maybe. War. War never changes. The Romans waged war to gather slaves and wealth. Spain built an empire from its lust for gold and territory. Hitler shaped a battered Germany into an economic superpower. But war never changes. In the 21st century, war was still waged over the resources that could be acquired. Only this time, the spoils of war were also its weapons, petroleum and uranium. For these resources, China would invade Alaska, the US would annex Canada, and the European Commonwealth would dissolve into quarreling, bickering nation states bent on controlling the last remaining resources on Earth. In 2077, the storm of World War had come again. In two brief hours, most of the planet was reduced to cinders. And from the ashes of nuclear devastation, a new civilization would struggle to arise. A few were able to reach the relative safety of the large underground vaults. Your family was part of that group that entered Vault 13. Imprisoned safely behind the large vault door under a mountain of stone, a generation has lived without knowledge of the outside world. Life in the vault is about to change. Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Fallout. When I said that thing about emotional comfort food in that video last week, this is what I was talking about. Uh, then I got distracted by the Eternal Castle, but we're here now doing this thing. The original two Fallout games are very near and dear to me. I played them at an important, formative time, and these games had significant influence on my taste and my ideas about narrative and narrative-related mechanics in games. Now, Fallout is big business these days. A lot of people have played those Bethesda games, and they've gotten a lot of press and stuff, but I don't actually know how many people out there are familiar with what the series was at its beginning, which I think is um, not exactly the same thing as what it turned into. Uh, so I want to make them known to you, and I think with this first game in particular, I am in a really good position to do that, because there is probably no game that I have played through as many times, or that I know as well, as the original Fallout. Uh, to that end, we're going to be playing the game, uh, we're going to be playing through the game with three different characters concurrently, uh, tackling each area and problem with a variety of approaches to show off the breadth of what the post-apocalypse has to offer. I'm also going to be making a couple of short videos along the way, much like this one, that are just about the mechanics to explain some of the weirdness of the system, because because there's some weirdness in the systems in this game. Um, so I guess this is a good time to make just absolutely clear to everybody, there is no gameplay in this video. The first gameplay video should already be up by the time you can hear this. Uh, for this one, we're just talking about numbers and characters. Feel free to skip to, the, the, skip to the other thing if that doesn't sound interesting to you. Okay, so speaking of characters, let's take a look at our characters. Actually, before we do that, we should probably talk about mechanics a little bit, huh? This is our special character sheet. Now I can hear you out there asking, what makes it so special? Well, nothing. It's, it's a totally normal character sheet. I don't understand what you're... Oh, okay. Now I see the problem. See, the rule system that makes the Fallout games tick is called the Special System, so named for the seven core statistics that all characters have. Uh, in order to understand what makes our characters different from one another, you're going to have to start to understand at least some of what these numbers mean. 
So when I click on something, you can see down here in the lower right, we get like a little readout of what it is. Let's just go down one by one. Strength, uh, first of all, affects your carry weight, the amount of the amount of gear and garbage that you can carry around. If you've ever played a, an RPG game that has carry weight as a mechanic, you might think, oh, that seems really important. And ordinarily, you'd be right. But this ends up not mattering all that much for reasons that'll become clear pretty early on into the game. It also affects your skill in melee. Uh, you can see here we have a melee damage number that is derived from strength. As we raise strength, melee damage goes up. Uh, but it also affects your accuracy in melee. Uh, each of the skills here that is used to, uh, to determine whether you succeed or fail at challenges uh, is based on your stats in some, way, in some way. So agility and strength both factor into unarmed. Uh, so if you're going to be a character who wants to punch people to death, strength is really important. Uh, that said, it's not necessarily important at the beginning. And you'll see what I mean when we get in. But even for our, our punchy melee fighting characters, five strength is going to be totally sufficient. Uh, perception says a lot of words here about all of your senses and whatnot, but perception is basically, is, is mostly a stat that you use to shoot people. Um, it does not directly figure into your weapon skills in the same way that strength does. You can see like the gun skills are based directly on agility, but it does figure into the calculation for how your range from the target affects your hit percentage, and that calculation will be used in literally every ranged attack that is made by every creature in the entirety of the game. So if you want to shoot people, perception's pretty important. It does have a couple of other minor uses like noticing traps on floors, but that stuff really does not come up very much. The other thing that it does is it affects your sequence, which is an initiative modifier. It determines how soon in a combat turn you get, how soon in a combat round you get your turn. Uh, so it is important, especially if you're a, a shooty character. Endurance affects your hit points, and that's pretty much it. It says some other stuff down here about like healing rate and poison and radiation resistance, um, but this stuff doesn't matter almost at all. You might think in a game that is about surviving in a post-apocalyptic uh, nuclear wasteland, radiation resistance might matter a lot, but it totally doesn't, and you'll you'll see why. Uh, Endurance does, however, affect the amount of hit points you start with and the amount of hit points you get every time you level up. A character that has high endurance will end up with a lot more health than a character with low endurance. But to be perfectly honest with you, this game's not that hard, um, so we're not going to stress too much about our endurance. Uh, speaking of things that don't really matter that much, Charisma. Fallout is a game about talking to people. Mostly. You do a lot of talking to people in this game. And so you might intuitively assume that that means charisma is really important. I can understand why you would make that mistake. But almost everything important in dialogue is governed actually by your intelligence or by your speech skill. So the way charisma figures into conversations is mostly uh, by it affecting your speech skill. But we're going to level up so much and get a hold of so many skill points over the course of the game that uh, even, even by the time we've leveled up a couple of times, the amount that charisma contributes to our speech is going to be such a small portion of our overall speech skill that it ends up mattering almost not at all. Uh, you'll see with, with a couple of our characters, we're going to drop it down to the minimum and be perfectly fine. Intelligence is tremendously important to any character who wants to talk their way through quests. Um, you'll use your speech skill to roll when you're trying to, like, convince people of things or uh, lie to them, deceive them, but there are a number of dialogue options that won't even appear unless your intelligence is high enough. There's no amount of speech skill you can get that will make you able to say all of the things. Uh, in addition, intelligence affects how many skill points you get every time you level up, which obviously is pretty valuable. Uh, intelligence is a very, very powerful stat. Agility is uh, probably equally powerful, maybe even more so for some characters, uh, because agility determines the number of action points you get in combat. You can see here, a, a character gets seven action points base, and as we increase agility, that number goes up. Uh, everything that you want to do in a combat round, moving, shooting, punching, opening a door, using an item from your inventory, basically anything, uh, will cost some number of action points. Characters who have a lot of action points are just hugely better at combat than characters who don't, and this is not a game where you can talk through all of your problems, because some of your problems will be angry wildlife. 
Uh, finally, luck. Luck sets your base critical rate. You can see here we have a 5% chance to crit on an attack, and that just scales uh, directly with luck. Um, it also affects your chance to find special encounters out in the wilderness, and fingers crossed, we will see all of the special encounters by the time the game is over. Uh, critical hits are obviously important, but due to the way combat works, which we'll talk about in more detail later, the amount of critical chance you get from luck isn't super relevant to most characters. It's going to be a situation a little bit like the speech skill, where there are other factors that are so much more important that uh, your luck skill making your crit chance go up or down by 2 or 3% probably isn't going to have a big effect in the grand scheme of things. So now that you know at least what the stats mean, let's actually meet our characters. So first up, we have Marty. Marty is a real smart guy, kind of good at everything, and 100% completely insufferable about it. With his high perception, intelligence, and agility, Marty can shoot at people, talk to people, or run from people, which covers all the main ways that you can interact with a person. Uh, in the skills area over here, you can see a couple of our skills are highlighted in white. That means that we have tagged them. Each character gets to tag three skills, uh, and a tagged skill receives a small bonus. You can see here if we untag it, you get 20% on it for free. And then every skill point that is spent in a tagged skill increases the value of the skill by two instead of by one. Uh, you can see here Marty has tagged some social stuff. Speech, obviously, tremendously important. Um, barter, you know, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to trade with people at least a little bit toward the beginning of the game. Uh, and also the small gun skill. You might imagine that small guns refers to stuff like pistols, and it does, but it also covers a lot of guns that you might not describe as small, like shotguns and rifles. Basically, any kind of conventional firearm is fired using the small gun skill. Now, you might be thinking that that doesn't really leave a lot of room for the other gun skills to be useful, and if you are thinking that, good job, you're, you're absolutely right. Small guns is way better than the other gun skills. Uh, down in the corner here, you can see the traits box. Uh, so each character can take up to two traits. Traits are optional trade-offs. Each one has a little bit of upside and a little bit of downside. Uh, Marty has taken Finesse, which reduces the amount of damage that his attacks do, but increases his critical hit rate. Uh, when we talk about combat, I'll explain why this is a trade-off worth making for this character. You can see we went high luck as well, so like obviously this is a character who cares about uh, critical hit chance. Uh, we've also taken Gifted, which, if I'm being honest, is just kind of like putting the game on easy mode a little bit. Um, Gifted raises all of your special stats by one, and then after it's raised them, you can like reassign those points, so it's kind of like it's just giving you seven extra stat points. Uh, the trade-off is that you lose 10% on all of your skills to start and receive fewer skill points per level, but remember, each point of intelligence increases the amount of skill points you get per level, so the int gain uh, easily offsets the skill point loss, and getting to start with higher stats is really, really powerful. Technically, if you are trying to build the optimal character, you should always take Gifted, because the, be the benefit of it is huge and the trade-off is very, very small. Uh, Marty has these kind of crappy starting skills because of it, but I think somehow he will manage. Next, we have Ricky. Ricky is focused on, in her own words, the dark truths that most sheeple ignore. She thinks of herself as very stealthy, but really it's just that most people in the vault have learned to pretend not to see her so they don't have to talk to her. Now, if you're looking at her stat box here, you might be asking, hey, if charisma's so useless, why did you give her so much of it? And the answer is... I thought this would be a funny prank to play on her. No, actually, what I said was that Charisma is nearly useless, because it does in fact do two small things. The first thing is that it, go uh, it governs NPCs' reactions to you. Sort of. Kind of. See, every NPC in the world has a numerical value representing how much they like you that is called reaction. The first time you speak to a character, their initial reaction will be set, and your charisma figures into that initial reaction value very heavily, actually. The problem is that almost nobody in the Wasteland will actually treat you differently or give you any different options based on their reaction value. Uh, so most of the time it doesn't matter how much reaction you get from your charisma, because it doesn't do anything. You can tell this feels like a system 
that they came up with early in design and then later decided they weren't going to use a lot and then they just didn't bother to take it out because why bother to take it out? The other thing that Charisma does is actually affect barter prices pretty significantly. We'll show the difference between a high charisma character and a low charisma character bartering for stuff. Um, you probably saw when I was showing you Marty that the barter skill is based on charisma, but also just raw charisma figures into the barter price uh, formula as well. Uh, you can see from Ricky's tagged skills that she's going to be doing her best to go around people rather than talking her way past them. We have lockpick and steal. Uh, why, why talk people into giving you things or letting you into places where you can just let yourself in? Uh, down in the traits box, we've taken one-hander, which gives you a significant uh, hit chance bonus with one-handed weapons, and an even more significant hit chance penalty with two-handed weapons. I think the penalty is 40%, so we really, really don't want to use any two-handed weapons with her. Also, she's jinxed. This is actually one of my favorite traits. Uh, Jinxed makes it so every creature in the game, including Ricky herself, suffers a dramatically increased rate of critical failures in combat. This should actually be really good for her, and I'll explain why when we talk about combat in more detail. Finally, we have Asher. Asher is not a nice person. He likes hurting people, and breaking stuff, and generally being a menace. As a present to himself on his 18th birthday, Asher decided he would take over the vault and declare himself king by force. Fortunately for everyone else, his master plan was foiled right at the moment of triumph when he fell off of the overseer's very tall chair onto his head, suffering a serious traumatic brain injury. In accordance with their values, the good people of the vault put him back together again and nursed him back to health and started looking for the very first morally acceptable reason to kick him out into the radioactive desert. The first thing to draw attention to here is that Asher has three intelligence, on account of that thing that he did to his skull. In Fallout, characters with intelligence lower than four can't speak normally, and since a lot of the opportunities and information in the game are accessed through conversation, these characters can have a very difficult time getting through the game. Now I'm just going to level with you here. Fallout does not offer a very sensitive portrayal of the not smart character, uh, but I want to show everything, so I'm going to show you how these characters lose opportunities, and what they gain in return. It's not a lot, but there's there are a few things. Uh, Asher only has combat skills tagged because he's... Uh, let's be honest. Combat is all of what he's going to be doing. Uh, down in the traits box, we've taken Fast Shot, which reduces the amount of action points that it costs to fire guns, but makes him unable to use aimed shots. Obviously, it's great to shoot your enemies more, uh, but the trade-off here is actually very significant. We'll talk about it a little bit more when we talk about combat, but aimed shots are actually really important. He also has Bloody Mess, which is the only trait that has no mechanical upside or downside. All it does is make dying enemies always use their most violent death animations. This just feels to me like the sort of thing that Asher would choose to spend character resources on. Man likes to see people explode. So, those are the three buffoons we'll be taking out into the wastes. I didn't go over everything on the character sheet, uh, because, frankly, there's a lot of stuff, and some of it's really not worth talking about. Uh, and some of the stuff that is worth talking about is going to get explained when we talk about combat. But, if you have any questions about elements of the sheet that I skipped, or why I've made the decisions I've made, uh, on the character sheets, I mean, but I guess also in life, if you want, uh, feel free to ask that stuff in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.